DPS has failed you. We did not do what we should have done. Although board members say they had a tough time doing it, they did vote this morning to close the three schools the superintendent recommended. We just really want to, you know, insert ourselves in the debate a little bit to say, let's talk about solutions. The homeless camping ban is the preeminent issue in Denver's mayoral race, but the agency that advocates for the homeless wants to change the narrative. And a court hearing was underway when suddenly a juror collapsed. She had no pulse, but Arapaho deputies were in the right place at the right time. The Denver School Board voted, and this will be the last school year for Fairview Elementary, Denver Discovery, and the Mathematics and Science Leadership Academies. And this morning's vote did not come without emotion, though. Several of the board members cried and had to take a break after casting the first yes votes to close Denver Discovery. Delisa Irizarry was there for the special meeting. Change is not always easy, but over time, change is inevitable. At today's Board of Education meeting, change was emotional. I'm thinking of those students today um, through this because I, they, they really love that community. The DPS Board of Education voted to close three schools at the end of the year. The decision was made due to critically low enrollment. Students from the Math and Science Leadership Academy will go to Val Verde Elementary next year. Denver Discovery students will have their choice to go to another school within the district. And Fairview students will head to Cheltenham Elementary next year. DPS has failed you. We did not do what we should have done. They just don't listen to us. For Fairview parent Naja Abu Saria, the news was heartbreaking. Housing developments near Fairview expect to bring many more families in the area now without a school. DPS argues a lot of those potential students would likely opt into school choice and go somewhere else within the district. But for the kids that already call this neighborhood home, change is already in motion. Really, this is unfair. All anyone can do now is hope it was the right decision. It's not going to make people less angry, and it's not going to produce a tremendous amount of trust. I hope that moving forward, we can do that. Now, Superintendent Alex Marrero did say they want to use the Fairview Elementary building for something next school year. This is the school near the developments between Federal and I-25 near Mile High. They're not exactly sure what that school will be, but he said, quote, that school will be functioning in some capacity next year. Kim and Tom? So wait and see on that. This one has taken a while, months. Okay, thank you, Jaleesa. The Denver Teachers Union is speaking out on the future of the closed down Park Hill Golf Course. The group wants voters to say yes to the 2-0 ballot measure, saying the space needs to be affordable housing. The union says the proposal would result in more than 2,000 new homes, with one quarter of them designated as affordable. The plan also calls for a portion of that land to be a new park. But there's an opposing proposition to have that whole 155 acres be open space. The measure will be on the municipal election ballot April 4th. Advocates who work with people experiencing homelessness want to give Denver city leaders a reality check. They say that their strategies are not working. Colorado's Coalition for the Homeless says as many as 10,000 people are homeless in the city. Of course, it is a top issue for voters, as well as the 17 candidates running to become Denver's next mayor. But as the coalition told Nine News reporter Courtney Yoon, some of the strategies don't actually help the homeless. Homelessness in Denver continues to increase and has been for years, according to the Colorado Coalition for the Homeless. But the problem continues to grow, and if we don't continue to invest, then we may never catch up. Kathy Alderman, Chief Communications and Public Policy Officer for the Coalition, says criminalizing homelessness, camping bans, and a treatment-first approach do not work when trying to get people housed. Arresting people because they're homeless is not going to resolve their homelessness. Um, and in fact, it's going to make it harder for them to get a job and get into housing down the road. She says the Coalition wanted to respond to some of the strategies proposed by mayoral candidates. We've heard candidates say, we're going to arrest people if they don't accept services. Well. That you can't do that. That's unconstitutional and, and it doesn't solve anything. Alderman adds that a camping ban just moves people from place to place and can be disruptive to the services someone might be receiving on the streets. She says a treatment first approach, the idea that a person needs to get sober before they deserve housing, also doesn't work. 
It's why she says the coalition supports a housing first approach. It is much easier for individuals to deal with a substance use disorder, to deal with a mental health issue once they're stably housed. She says a housing first approach is a proven solution that they've seen work after nearly 40 years of service to the unhoused community. And it also saves taxpayers money. It costs much more to leave somebody out on the streets, interacting with the criminal justice system, in and out of shelter, in and out of emergency rooms, than it does to house somebody with supportive services. The coalition says it can provide supportive housing and services for around $13,400 annually for an individual experiencing homelessness. The organization says taxpayers spend more than double that for emergency services like incarceration, detox treatment and shelter services. And you point to the impact that this uh, mayoral election will have not only on people in the city, but certainly on those people in particular, those people experiencing homelessness. Absolutely. We'll see which candidate comes forward and what they plan to do with this crisis. All right, Courtney, thanks. A group of Democratic lawmakers has introduced three new bills aimed at breaking down barriers that they say too often prevent Coloradans from assessing re reproductive health care, abortion and gender affirming care. The first bill would establish that criminal prosecutions for abortion, gender affirming care and other legally protected health care will not be recognized in Colorado. The second would ensure that reproductive care remains affordable and accessible. And the third would prohibit deceptive advertising by anti-abortion centers, the legislative package has numerous sponsors. A bill that has already passed one chamber targets ticket scams. The legislature would keep ticket resellers from selling until they actually have possession of the tickets. The bill also requires companies to clearly display all in prices, which would not only be the ticket prices, but the taxes, service charges and other fees. The ticket consumer protection bill passed the Senate today now heads to the full house for approval. Colorado Congressman Joe Nagoose and Doug Lamborn are part of a new bipartisan caucus created to address the fentanyl crisis. Their goal is to educate Americans on the dangers of fentanyl and provide real solutions to try and stop the destruction try to, that the drug brings because they say it's caused thousands of deaths. Members say they'll be working with federal and state law enforcement in their efforts. Here's a heads up. You might want to make sure you're driving extra carefully with focus because the Colorado State Patrol is watching. Troopers are going to be out in force tomorrow looking for distracted drivers all over the state. CSP says that there has been a significant increase in the number of fatal and injury crashes over the past three years, attributing many of them to distracted drivers. So if you look down and swerve, you might find yourself being pulled over. There's been some hope building that when Suncor finally gets online at the end of the month, gas prices will go down. Industry analysts say that's not necessarily the case. And you will see some stability. You will see prices fall a little bit in April, but certainly not to the same extent that they jumped when Suncor went offline. And it was around $2.80 at the time that it went offline late December, the shutdown, and the prices jumped about a dollar a gallon within a month. Now AAA shows the average price in Denver is $3.93. Since summer is right around the corner, industry analysts believe it will likely have to wait until the fall before we see a real price drop. Sheriff's deputies were standing watch during what seemed to be routine court proceeding. It all changed, though, when a juror collapsed. What those deputies did next is getting some much deserved attention. The twisting of just a few screws, a longtime Denver tradition, will live on how the city continues to tap into its Irish spirit. Coming up.